You're listening to Goof On Radio with Rich Jordan. My personal belief is that uh, there is very compelling evidence that we, uh, we may not be alone. There has been and is an existing presence, uh, an ET presence. It's not going to make a difference. It's not going to change reality. I believe, as do the other folks that were on the flight, that we, when we visually saw it, that it was something not from this world. Goof on Radio. Occasionally think how quickly our differences worldwide would vanish if we were facing an alien threat from outside this world. Goof on radio. Remain seated, please. Permanecer sentados, por favor. You are listening to Goof On Radio with Rich Jordano. Welcome to Goof On, everybody. I'm your host, Rich Giordano. We are live. It is Saturday in the UK. Okay, all right, all right. Calm down. It's October 8th, 2022. How the hell are you? Oh, you know, I'm doing this and doing that. Feeling pretty good. Thanks for asking mentally. I can feel the energy coming right at me. Because we are. The Gangster UFO Network. That's right. Gangster up, everybody. Tonight, today, this afternoon, good morning, good evening, and good night. <sighs> George, Georgie boy. Oh, the Georgie, Georgie, Georgie. This is the end. This has to be George Knapp's last stand. As far as his credibility, it's gone now. I, th I think they did some thing on uh, Mystery Wire called The Summoners. And they got people who say they can summon UFOs. One of those people is the famous balloon god of all time. He makes Jeff Woolwine look like uh, legit. Yeah, you know, Robert Bingham. Madonna mia. What the hell's this guy? It's that. Wait until you see. See the balloon? You see the balloon? Right here. He thinks that's a UFO. 
Why why am I getting oh it's it's gotta be the lighting. Something's going on, right? It's like changing. You see how like one minute the I look like the shirt's a lighter color and then it gets darker? It's cutting in and out. It did that last night. Yeah, I know. I, I tried doing it without a hat. I gotta have a hat. I gotta have a hat on. Not a hat on a hat on. Come on, don't say stuff like that. I'm sorry. I didn't mean it. Roll call. I know. I'm stupid. The shirtless wonder. Bob Birkins, welcome to the show. I'm going to do a calm show. You know, just be uh, just be like everybody wants me to be. Tony Introvert, welcome to the show. Brookers. No, I didn't forget my hat. I actually tried doing my hair without a hat. And uh, I think my forehead got bigger. Yeah, it's elongated. I'm getting the elongated skull syndrome. That happens to experiencers that don't fake shit. Yeah. You'll have it too, Brookers. Welcome to the show. The Wild One. Rebecca. Uh, welcome to the show. Richie Hag. Imagine being able to summon a UFO, though. Yeah. Imagine that. Watch, watch. I'm going to imagine it. Ha ha, that was a good one. Welcome to the show. Randall Hill, Randy, welcome to the show. Sammo, Goofoni and Rockstar, welcome to the show. Derek Kennedy. Yeah, thanks a lot, Derek. You're, you're a nice man. Appreciate it. Deckard, welcome to the show. See, this is how people want us to act, right? Welcome to the show. Woods Elf, welcome to the show. Mind blown over UAPs, welcome to the show. The Shirtless Wonder, Bob Birkins, welcome to the show, Robert. Uh, Jeanette Bombach, welcome to the show. Welcome back. Nice to see you. Mind blown over UAPs. If I didn't say it, I'll say it again. I didn't. I thought I did. what I say? I forgot what I said. Hello. Welcome to the show. All right. Diane Boss, Boss, Boz, Boston Deadhead, welcome to the show. Mike Larry, welcome to the show. Marie Jose Sproul, Sproul, Josie, welcome to the show. Stargate Traveler, welcome to the show. What's up, John Hunsley, welcome to the show. Isn't it better? It's better this way, right? Dinkamazi, welcome to the show. All right, let's see who's at the front door, and then we'll proceed. Hey, Brian, how you doing? Glad you made it in. Kevin, whoop, made it right through. I saw you get your leg in. Nathan, held that door open for Kevin. Thank you for that. Welcome to the show. And Derek Faulkner, welcome to the show, everybody. Foghorn, Leghorn, Andrew Fricker, you guys were here. There you go. Props with a Z, welcome to the show. All right, let's get let's get this thing going because Fro Twenty cannot not say hi. And Gina Marie, wouldn't you agree that Stephen Greer's head is too? No, no, it's big. Yeah, his head is it's it's a large head. He's six four. He's a big guy. Hey, what do you say, Brandon Smith? Who is it? Welcome to see you. Who's this guy? Brooklyn King seven one eight. What's up, Chief? Good to see you, Mac. Marvin Dale Likens Jr. I thought I was starting. Cannot not say hi to you guys. Welcome to the show. All right, now everybody. No new names came in on the last. Paul did. Paul, he's from the UK. I got to say, hey, hey. <laughs> What's up, Paul? Welcome to the show from the UK. Guys, I'm going to play a video because uh, I want to get your palate wet. And uh, this is a very frustrating uh, you know, we're all frustrated in this field, right? I'm not getting into anything, you know, all that drama stuff. You know, we're just going to do what we do here, and that's it. I am not getting involved anymore with the shit. Like I told you yesterday, I'm just reiterating it. I don't care what anybody says or does. They're, they're, they're going crazy out there. Look, it is, it's, now I, I don't mention anything on the show. But I am interacting with the haters outside of the show. 
I'm just not doing it here. But I'm not being. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm letting them. I'm letting them hear it. Well, let me just tell you that. Um, well, let me just tell you this. I've got an ace. Yeah, up my sleeve. That's all I have to say. All right, all right. Let's um. Let's get that video ready. It should be right here. Now, I've gotten a lot of emails from people about my fleet video that I showed on Ali's show, Alien Addict, and my show yesterday. And uh, it might be in a documentary. Yeah, it's that. It's, it's interesting. Yeah, yeah. All right, what do I have here? Oh, I'll show you this. So this is very interesting. <clears throat> COVID. This... People are like we all heard about implants, right? From alien, alien implants. Well, now an implant known from a woman called the chip girl, her microchip implant in her hand went viral. What does that mean? I don't know. Yeah. I don't know, but I need to play a video. So this one will give me the minute I need to go grab the, the water I need. <laughs> Check it out, though. It's interesting. Hey, and of course, something that's currently been going on in the world with the manipulation of people's DNA. But a subscriber on the website named Roy shared this with me. And again, if you're not a member of the website, I highly recommend you join the website. You could share stuff like this. If you there's video topics you want me to cover or at least want me to see, that's where you can share it. A time for judgment.com or a call for an uprising.com, excuse me, Gazuntite. So Roy shared this over on the website, and now I'm sharing it with you. It makes sense, right, in today's crazy world that somebody would go viral and become a TikTok star or a YouTube star. Now, this person isn't that yet, but this video went viral that I'm gonna share with you about this woman who goes by the name of or and doing all sorts of things around the house, using the chip in her hand. And then you go read the comment section below the video and you just wanna pull your hair out because you see people who are fascinated by it. They have some questions. They're wondering, what happens if the power goes out? What happens if um, you know something goes faulty with the chip, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But nobody seems to be asking the big question about taking the mark. But here is them normalizing the RFID microchip. I call myself Chip Girl because I have an RFID chip inside of my hand that unlocks things around our house. Today, somebody asked me what I can open with my hand. So I'm going to show you. This is also a door that it opens. We've also got a snack. That door's a little bit harder to open, but we've got a snack cupboard. We've got another door that it opens. It also opens our bedroom door as well as our office. If you look at the house these people are living in, <laughs> of course, it would be somebody with money like that to have a chip in their hand. I don't think that would work well for people that are active. What about people who work out? Like if it's right here, you know, in this part, and I and I grab a bar and I work it out and it, and doesn't it crush it or push it into me? You know what I mean? I, I don't, I'm not sure. I guess it would protect it. The muscle around would protect it. But it didn't seem small. I mean, that that seemed pretty big. It's at least half an inch. Anyway, yay, you can open up the garage. You can open up the refrigerator. You can turn on lights in your house. You can pay your grocery bill. You're not chipping me. Anyway, she went viral showing what it can do. And people are like, Wow, that's amazing. Is it? We've been talking about it for 20 years, if not even longer. But it is interesting to see it in working fashion, you know? I am going to help load up my... Uh... Mm, smells so good. Smell it. I know. I know. I saw sticks in there, too. Shouldn't be. 
fifty dollars an eighth. Yeah, I didn't pay the fifty. It should never be sticks in any dispensary you go to. In Arizona, if there was a stick, they gave it to you for free. Well, this one place. Yeah, they gave away a, a several. I mean, they, they didn't give you it for free. They gave you an eighth for free. Yeah, because there shouldn't be. And in, in, I don't think there should be. If it's coming from the government now and they're regulating this shit, I am paying a certain fee to not have your freaking sticks and seeds. Thank God there's no seeds. I mean, it looks really good. I mean, this is really good. It's good weed. It actually is. And I think they shorted me on one. By a gram. Supposed to get 3 point what? 3.5 or something? Like, I got this one the same day, and I evenly used Sativa and then the other one. And this one's got so much left, and the other one's almost out. Like, how does that happen? Uh, and it wasn't... It doesn't matter. Let's just move on. I understand things could be crunched, you know, compacted, but not this. These were buds. I got shorted, and I'm pissed. Yeah, you can't you can't go there and weigh it. They put it in this thing, you know. So this way, you have to take it out and grab your hand scale and go. Yeah, it's off by a little bit. You don't have time to do that. I hate that shit. I am smoking. This one is called. Huh doesn't say oh it's it's called gorilla puff it's gorilla puff hybrid it's actually good 23 percent thc point or five milligrams of cbd Who cares recommended dose Take a single inhalation, inhalation, then wait for effect. Let me try that. Yeah, I can't do it on the screen. I got to do uh, little me, right? Oh, I don't have a video up. Let me pull up what we're going to talk about next. We're going to go right to uh, the George Knapp. We're going to, all right, I'm going to show you this video. All right, let's let's just start the insanity and I'll take a few puffs and see how it works. You got to watch this video. We're starting the insanity right now, folks. Buckle up, as they say at Third Phase of Moon. You can help support the show. We are supported by you. And, you know, we don't beg. I don't have a kid you have to buy any games for. I just have 11 children that have already, almost all of them graduated and are on their own. You guys help support them. But, uh, you know, we don't do any gimmicks here. We just give you the truth every day. And uh, that's no joke. And showing you videos. Look, yesterday you saw the most incredible UFO video. Everybody was talking about it like, what the? F that's awesome. We do. Um, it's as legit as it gets here. There's nothing fake about Goofon. That's why people support this show. They understand what we're doing, right? You understand. We're not here to hate anybody. Even though we hate people. So, oh, Corbell, certain people. Lizondo. Other than that, you know what? We're, we're as freaking legit as it gets. I swear to God. I don't know what else to tell you, but uh, I know you believe, right? You do believe? You believe in that? You believe it? Truthology for ufology. Let's listen to Robert Bingham. He is... What I do is I'm a summoner. I bring a in summoner. UFOs and I interact with the UFOs. And he doesn't I even believe with it. with Bigfoot. I interact with ghosts, but mostly UFOs. Ghosts? The techniques is uh, I look into a blue sky, a blank sky blue, and I just concentrate on one little spot in that blue sky and concentrate, and I telepathically tell them to arrive. Like I'm doing now. All right. So it goes something like this. 
blue blue patch okay hold on this is what he's doing in here now i'm gonna be his mind you're gonna hear what his mind says hello is anybody out there can you hear me sa can you come to the spot right here in the blue patch please i want to see blue uh a beautiful display can you come and visit hey where the fuck are you man come on i'm robert bingham man i'm the godfather of summoner come on hold on i'm getting a massage now that's the wrong number come on man where are they oh wait hold on there's something that seems to be glistening in the sun yeah, you know what it looks like? I think we got one. Somebody get a camera. Bring it on over. No, that's not a balloon. Don't say that, F.A. That right there is a legitimate, that's a lizard person. And they use their tails to abduct small children and animals for food. Oh, that's a good, that's a good bull, uh, uh, string, uh, ufo right there like i said i'm i'm robert bingham and i can summons ufos all you have to do is look at a blue patch in the sky and almost talk like jaime mosan again oh i i actually got the pilot from the videos no that's the wrong telepathy message man how come that's in there come on fa there we go. Look up in the sky. Oh, yo. yeah, there right it is. There. there it is. Right there. It's right there. If I got it, I say it. I don't hold back and say, oh, they're going to think I'm crazy. No, I don't. I say it. God, I think you're stupid, pinhead. Nah, <laughs> balloon boy. I'm sorry. I didn't mean to swear. I said I was going to be the nice guy today, but. Dorothy Hawkins with the $2 Super Chat. Great show today. Always worth the support. That's a $2 Super Duper Chat right there from Dorothy Hawkins. Thank you, Dorothea. We appreciate it. And because that is the first s s Super Chat of the day, we'll give you a traditional thank you. Thank you, Dorothy Hawkins, for the $2 Great Show Support Super Chat. Is that Sheila Aliens? That's Sheila Aliens? Hey, Sheila. Good to see me. Uh, thanks, Dorothy. Big mucho gusto, generoso support. Um, Robert Bingham. This is, and I know Sheila knows Robert Bingham. Come on, Sheila. You know what this guy's capable of? Ruining ufology. One balloon at a time. And I'm surprised he hasn't done it. I'm really surprised. All right, let's 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 watch a little more here. Yeah, yeah, I got... To, now, I'm getting into uh, the George Knapp stuff. So this is uh, George Knapp just swallowing up Robert Bingham, eating him up like he found something new. Like Bingham's been around for decades. Balloon after balloon, and it got worse as it went on. Okay, shh. Process. He's explaining how he does it here on the George Knapp mystery, uh, mystery wire, I believe it is. I'm to that spot, and I'll telepathically put out the message for them to show up, and I believe that, you know, that they're going to show. You have to believe. Well, this is what he says. Oh, no, I believe that they're going to show. You have to believe. You have to have faith. Ah, ah, ah. Ah, ah. You either believe or have faith. Can't have it both ways, can you? I guess you can. I'm just looking for a glitch in order to make things happen. Oh, you have to have faith. Yeah, you know, the law of attraction is actually working for Bingham and boys. You want to know why? The law of attraction works. Since the, the law of attraction can't get UFOs, like legitimate ones with aliens in them, it gets the next best thing that could trick the Bingham. And it gives him balloons. The guy, how does he not know they're balloons? He has to know. Everybody tells him. 
That's a string. It's waving in the breeze. No, it's not. It's a tail from the lizard people. Well, Jeff Woolwine said that. Who? You know who. You stole it from them. That's what these guys do. They steal each other's ideas and and um, mesh them together into their own story. It, it's beautiful. It just never ends. It, ufology just keeps on giving. New person, new decade, new people. I mean, it's just never ending. Go. Uh, yes, this is so ridiculous. And George Knapp gets so excited. Are you kidding? Crowds came from all over Southern California, ready to film and Not this watch part. the UFOs. People brought their camcorders and cameras. Tens of people came from all over the street. As usual, street. activity began <laughs> right away with a big orb right over the third Park phase Plaza of Moon Hotel. discovered. This guy. Oh, here we go. Left side of the pole towards the bottom. Mid, kind of midway. Fantastic, I got it. I just yeah. saw the string on it. It already reflected the sunlight down here. It was down here. Watch, I'm going to work back and you just watch where I told you. Ah, right, there it is. It's already started. <laughs> Fantastic, I got it. Yeah. That's a kill. Uh, you see what I mean? You see, it's the string and... What it's doing, it's it's unfolding, and as it's unfolding, it it bubbles out, and the sun hits this part, and then it looks like oh something's coming out of the craft because you never see it keep on falling. You can tell it's part of the string, and when you do this long enough, Sheila can tell you, you know it immediately what it is. Now, if that string wasn't there, and you know they're always out of focus, he's never in focus. None of these people. But when they do get in focus, it looks like a balloon. But when they're out of focus, I'm telling you, that looks like it's spinning. Now, I showed you a while ago. I'll bring it up later in a minute. My balloon test that I did. Well, I did about 20 of them. But I have one that I could easily access online. And it definitely looked like it was spinning. It looked like lights were going all over the place. But there were strings. Uh, well... It is what shot. It is. Sad. <laughs> Reference point, everything. <laughs> wow. Every every two or three seconds, because the the thing is spinning very slowly, or there's a breeze and it's blowing. It's blowing the string around. Thanks, man. Here's the object scaled up, slow mode. Scaled up, unbelievable. And, and and there's a video here, oh my God, where, oh, I, I you know what, I, oof, oh, God, I wish I could access some stuff. Look, uh, underneath it is probably the string or something reflecting. Oh, yeah, it's a balloon. I mean, this is George Knapp giving these guys... Prime time. It is all balloons. I I would bet my life on it, and I'd bet my family's lives as well. These are balloons, day and night. Oh come on, man! I can show you a balloon that does that, but I have it in my bag. I'm doing that tomorrow. I'm getting that big old balloon, and I'm going to show you a balloon that that it, it, it's, let's just say it looks like this, right? And then all of a sudden it stops, and you can see all red-white balloons, and it stops very low in the sky, maybe 100 feet up, and it's all of a sudden it tilts, and then a balloon comes out, and then it keeps squirting them out, and, and, it, and the thing was big. It was 10 feet, probably, and the balloon, and it kept doing this. Bloop. Every time a balloon would get, it would go, like it was pooping it out. Bloop. Right? And then another one would go. Bloop. And I had the lens that can see 200 times closer. And it was so sad. So I finally got what Jaime Mosan and all those people captured popping out of these UFOs, balloons. And I caught it. Finally. Yeah, a couple of times. I got a balloon. And I, I have got to get these videos out there. That when I was recording it, it popped. Well, there were two of them. And when it popped, 
there was a white fog that stayed where it was. Probably from the helium, right? When it popped, why would there be a cloud of helium or oxygen where it was for a few seconds? Yeah. How often do you ever get to see that? You know, I recorded everything. Anything that flew overhead or that I could see, I recorded it. And this way, I could see what it looks like close up, far away, and use it as a reference for further things, for uh, future things, furthering the research. Paul from the UK. What's up, man? $20. Thank you very much. And that's a super dono because there's no message and there's no emoji. It's just pure love. Paul, because you're in the UK, we'll give you this. Thank you, Paul, from the UK for the $20 support. Mucho gusto. Generoso. Thank you very much. Uh, Coral is still out. So if I miss anything, I don't mean to. If I miss your super chats, I do. I'll check the PayPal. I heard something come in. Uh, thank you, Paul. That's kick ass, man. Kick ass. Thank you for the support. And Jeanette Bombach with uh, $5. I forget what country that is, but that there it goes. Super sticker time. First one of the night. That's a super sticker. Let's see. It is the working out. That's me working out. Keep it up. Yep. Thank you. I am the green pear right there. Poet and didn't even know it. Jeanette, always a pleasure. Thank you very much. A continuing supporter of Goofon as well. So we're going through, and I and I hate to be this guy, I really do. But George Knapp is is supporting this. This is unbelievable to me. Hey, what's up, Shelly? How you doing? Good to see you here. Right, hundred percent balloons, no doubt about it. Yeah, I feel like I'm losing my feeling. I have cotton mouth so bad. That is really good stuff right there. Mm -mm. Mm. It's Gorilla Puff. Never had it before. Some Florida stuff. I'm used to that Arizona dirt weed from Mexico now. <laughs> That's what we used to smoke. Ugh, it was always terrible. You had to smoke a whole quarter to get a buzz. All right. Now we're going to hear George give props where props are due. George Knapp is probably the nicest, uh, fakest guy you'll ever, you'll ever see. Here we go. He calls these people the summoners. Yeah, check this out. Yep, bringing it up. Thank you for hanging out. Saturday in the UK, we go two hours earlier just so you guys don't have to be up till 3, 4 in the morning to watch the show. Maybe... Just maybe we'll do Sunday in the UK as well. Saturday, Sunday for the UK. I'm thinking about it. At the end of the year, though, things are going to change, sadly. All right, here we go. Oh, before I do that, Diane Boss. Boz, I'm always going to get, I don't know, you know, $5 super sticker. Thank you very, very much. And I don't know, there it is. It is a... Um, Critical hit. It is a game controller. It looks like a PS5 or a Nintendo. Yep, that is right on. I love video games. I just don't play them as much anymore. Don't have the time. Diane, thank you. I don't know if that's your first super chat to goof on, but here we go. Thank you, Diane. For the $5 super sticker support. I know that, that audio is so loud on there. For me, it is. Thank you. I'm trying to have my more professional me come out. All right, I'm going to play this. And uh, these are the summoners. Oh, boy, they're a sweet bunch, I tell you. Do I got the volume on? Not hearing it. Here we go. Starting out, it sounds pretty crazy and far out. I was certainly a skeptic of this initially, but once I experienced the phenomenon, it had such a profound effect. Oh, I thought that was Jim Martin. Yeah, he's one of the good guys of ufology for sure. Jim Martin's, oh shit, that's right. 
1091. Great guy. On me, there was no going back. I, I had to embrace this new reality. Mike, you're you have a Harvard degree. Um, good grief. <laughs> Jesus. So yeah, mom, dad, I'm going out to summon in some aliens, pull them in with my mind. <laughs> uh, wow. yeah, it's a conversation around the family table that uh, does not exactly uh, gain me a lot of uh, points. Uh, I, I can assure you. Yeah, no, this is this is um, it's pretty bizarre. It's it's uh, probably downright a little bit insane. Uh, All right, so the guy's a Harvard graduate. He has a degree from whatever it is. Smart guy, right? But not a critical thinker. And you would think a guy with an IQ like that would be a critical thinker, because there's no way they're they're calling UFOs. And they're and they're coming to them. I'm telling you, it's not happening. I know. Uh, you know what? I tried it. It never worked. Not once. But I'll tell you what happened to me. And and I think it's I was addicted. You know, if if anybody knows anything about addiction. You're just looking to get to your next high. You just can't wait. So you're always thinking about it. And you're very familiar with the time. You always know what it feels like in an hour, 30 minutes. Addicts know what time it is all day long. What time is it? It's time to get more shit. And that's how it kind of was with going outside. Sometimes I would say... To my ex-wife now, I would be like, God, I gotta be, I gotta be honest with you, babe. I felt like I had to go out. I felt like if I didn't go out, I was gonna miss something. That's signs of an addict. And I think I at one time said I would get these feelings to go outside because I haven't been outside in an hour or two. But I would get these feelings. And that's not anything but the addiction of wanting to go outside and feel special or that you're going to do something historic and see aliens or a UFO. It really is an addiction. That's what this is. Nothing else. And with that addiction, you get... You start to think of things and your brain starts playing with you and it wants to see something so badly that you'll convince yourself that you saw something like Robert Bingham and these guys because you can't have that let down. You're not going to be let down. You have to feed that addiction. And if you don't feed it, you're not special. Hey. I went to school to be a psychologist. Come on, psychiatrist, anologist for criminals. Yeah, and um, this kind of behavior is equal to that of a alcoholic, drug addict, sex fiend, whatever you want to call your addiction, because that's what it is. Or is it? <laughs> I don't know. Man alive. See, now that's the thing that makes me, uh, that keeps me a little sane, saying something like that out loud, because it is true. Uh, I lived it. I lived it. I know what all these people are feeling. I know. I know what they want. They want to feel special. Harvard guy is so smarty stupid. Now, I'm saying that without seeing any of his evidence, but I assure you. Come on. Um, I've had to be pretty careful about uh, whom I share it with. Uh, See? Been in the closet for a number of years. Uh, engaged. Oh, so he was gay. All right. Well, so what? Huh? Oh, the story out of the closet. Yeah, got it. 
Uh, let's go uh, to the with next this guy. thing and, and dancing with it. But um, likewise, uh, same with Jim and same with Jim. Thank you for having us on here. And I, uh, um, yeah, it just got to the point where the experiences became too profound and too strange to continue to ignore it or to continue to treat it playfully. As an All of this the body movement, the shoulder shrugs, the head going left to right, the half smile, eyebrow raise. This guy is not sure. He is so all over the map. He's nervous probably being on this show or talking to George, who knows. He believes what he's saying, but he's not, he doesn't believe it is what it is. You could already tell that. Initially, it was just sort of something that uh, Alf and I especially it's, did as uh, kind of a game or a, a little bit of a, you know, a, so a little bit of a parlor so trick even, but uh, over time, so what? it just became a thing that I couldn't ignore and had to engage. That's and a big so one right here there. We're coming out. I'm not uh, doing Alpha, a body language. Question, sort of, which of these guys talked you into this? And do you remember <laughs> what kind of a pitch they made to you at the time? <laughs> I think uh, initially it was Jeremy that introduced us to Jim. And uh, we already were interested in the phenomenon, and Mike had already his kind of first sighting, you know, after. Um, what know, is he on a uh, boat? Jeremy, uh, John interview, John Lear interview. So um, I think my official career as a someone in started shaking his leg. To, uh, meet up with Jim. And All right. Well, I'm, I can't play a lot of this, you know. So I was just showing you the the fellas, the summoners. This is the group. He's the new gang. And I'm at hold on. I want to see something here. Though. Kind of uh, it. I didn't realize this was Jim Martin here. He's a cool dude. And here's some of the sightings. This is what I was. Video probably the best reporting I've shot to date. And this uh, took place at Long Beach in Long Beach, California. Oh, I this you know who he sounds like? Jeremy Corbell. Listen. I just purchased a new home there, and I was in my backyard just doing no. yard work, actually, one day when I no. looked up and saw this tremendous blob of light in the sky, this huge, yeah, white, it does. elongated light. Oh, and this looked a little different than most of the normal objects I see. Uh, that right, boy, I got to I gotta talk to Jim Martin. I have to save this guy's career. Cousins Brothers, can you let Jim Martin know I need to talk to him and have him delete all this stuff? I mean, he can't go around posting this saying these are UFOs. Come on. Which are typically orbs or circular objects. Come this on. Kind of like an elongated tube. Now, when I saw this object, I immediately grabbed my camera, which is an infrared recording camera. And you can I see. Oh, my goodness. God Canon almighty. Like 60, which has been modified to record. And see, this is what happens when you refuse to believe that balloons can do this. That's why I did the balloon tests. And that's what they don't do. Not one of these people ever did a balloon test to see if they can duplicate what they saw. You want to know why? Because the addict doesn't want to know the truth. The addict would rather believe in fantasy land. That's what sells tickets, babe. Balloons? That doesn't sell tickets. As a matter of fact, that kills sales altogether. Now I'm really suspect of what Jim Martin is really up to here. How does he not know? You guys see it, right? Would you think that this is a, this is a UFO? I guess you would if you don't know what balloons look like in the sky. Full spectrum to see these uh, other ranges of, of light that we can't see with our eyes. So once I put the oh, camera on please. this big um, glowing light can't, in the sky, oh all these smaller orbs were released from the eye. No, no, no. At night, there's a, and I think Jim lives in Arizona. At night in Arizona, Balloons still stay up in the sky. People think because it's nighttime, they, they, they drop because it gets cold. No, not on a 115 degree day. It's, it never gets under 95 in Phoenix during the summer, sometimes 90.
All right, I 95 once or twice. But the pool water was 95 degrees before I moved to Florida the year before. 95. Anyway, I'm saying that for a reason because balloons, they float around in the sky even at night. Guess what? I didn't see it with my regular camera. Duh. Of course you wouldn't. You know how hard it is to see a balloon at night? I should do a balloon test at night. I've never done one. I want to see if that's true, if I could use the infrared and see the balloon, which you should be able to. Ah, oh, this is a great... Uh, Jim Martin, wow, I'm surprised he's this gullible. This is, this is unreal. This is really bad. Bad, bad, bad. ...object, uh, which was just fascinating. And I'll, I'll add the first... Uh, three yeah. objects that came out of this port. Yeah, this is bad. Uh, I mean, I'll watch. Light. We're in a triangular form. Let's just do that this. That video has been shared all over oh, the Oh, yeah, what this too. I'm sorry. To know that we are interacting. Oh, come it's on. Kind of a, a basic form come of on! To communicate with. You had a second one. That Look at this. Was, uh, another one that's featured on your uh, site, uh, on your, your website link. Um, that's a drone. 2017, these five green lights. That, that. Is Nathan here? Nathan, you have seen these drones, right? I've seen these drones at the park. Yeah. What's this, Shelly? Where is Richie? Tell him to go to the big comedy club in Jacksonville. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I, uh, I, all right. Thanks. Got it. <laughs> Sheila aliens in mo, uh, in most high altitude weather balloon projects, your balloon will rise then burst and parachute back to ground. Very true. I always forget to mention that. That uh, This way they still get all of their gear. You know, they get their equipment that's doing all the testing. Good point, Sheila. Sheila aliens throwing down logic. Um, I know, I know. It's embarrassing. Right, Nathan? Yes, you've seen it too. Okay, so he's seen that drone. Because watch the, watch the motion of this this green object let's take a, a longer look and watch what i mean it, these are well let watch the video has been shared all <laughs> over the world what the heck was that thing time Thanks, for hit George. number yeah, that two was a really profound sighting and it was actually a close range sounds like corbell doesn't it off the ground uh, at my office in newport beach and i saw this tremendously large object hovering right near in my backyard of five green spears with a black tower on top of these spears. This tower was about 20 feet tall, and it was the strangest object I've ever seen in my life at close range. Now, I, I had the opportunity to film this very close, but when I put the camera on it and I hit record, my HD card was full. And so I panicked and I started erasing all the files from my camera, trying to capture this anomaly at close range. I yeah, you know, by the time I'd erased these files, it had traversed across the yard into the upper atmosphere. With a group, does it work? That that's a little interesting, though. Mikey, what? Yard into the upper atmosphere, and that's record. My HD card was full. I mean, it's interesting how it, it, it looked other. one way and then it changed. One that was See? Uh, another one that's featured on your. Uh, so maybe, uh, maybe this is something I've seen a drone that looks exactly like this at the park, exactly like. Yeah, a green, same green. It was five, but this looks like it broke up a little at the end there. So, and I don't think these are four or five drones together, but look, he's out of focus. He's out of focus anyway. And at night, you need to buy the camera that can do shit at night. Not, I don't like this. That, site uh, on your, your website link. I guess it is focused, huh? I don't know anymore. So I see what looks like to be some sort of one big object right here. But let's see. Um, from March of 20. So now you see this here. Now it's going to go away and something's going to happen. 17, these five green lights. That, that video has been shared all over the world. What the heck was that thing? Thanks, George. Yeah, that was a really profound sighting, and it was actually a close-range sighting. It was about 50 feet off the ground uh, at my office in Newport Beach, and I saw this tremendous... 
There's no way that was 50 feet off the ground. Absolutely no way. No way. No way. That is an interesting sighting. Now that I've looked at it a little longer, I can't explain what it did there. But I think it, it's a mundane object anyway. And I do think it's some sort of drone technology. Nonetheless, these are the people, including Jim Martin, that are calling themselves summoners. And they are really watering down ufology with the worst of the worst that I've seen in dec two decades. And these, these are... These are the people that a lot of Twitter, a lot of Twitter followers watch them. They love them, you know. It there. That's the type of um, that's the type of people they love. But there is a difference between their videos and my videos. There is. There's a major difference. Theirs are balloons. And I think that it's probably some sort of drone. And uh, and if it wasn't, it's unique, and I don't know what it is. But, hey, you're outside a lot. If you go outside en enough, it's like crap against a wall. You throw enough of it, some of it's going to stick. And that's what they get every now and then. They're If they go out every night like I did, you're going to see something that's a UFO. That's what's going to happen. You can't. You can't uh, explain every single thing away. And like I said, my percentage falls into the same percentage as the nationwide 90 to 95% I can explain away. And there's five, maybe 7% that I can't. Doesn't mean that they're UFOs. It means I just can't get up in the sky or I never saw it again to get a better shot at it. Never had an opportunity to, to duplicate it. Anyway. That's what's so interesting. Now, we take that, what we just saw from George Napster, and, uh, oh, wait, what's this? From George Knapp and Jim Martin and, and the other guys there saying that they're summoners. I forgot what I was going to say because I was trying to do two things at once. I want to play this. Uh, there's, a, maybe I do, maybe I don't. Now, I thought I had it ready. I don't have it. I'm going to click off that. Hmm. Meet the summoners is what it's called. What are the chances there is another life form living in our atmosphere? I want to take a look at this with you real quick. And then I want to get right into Bob Kiviat if I'm saying his last name correctly, he's a guy who's a filmmaker, uh, you know, made documentaries, TV shows about UFOs and aliens and whatnot, who seems to have uh, lost it. I don't know what's going on, guys, but if Third Phase of Moon posted this stuff on their channel, they would get ripped to shreds. But since it's, you know... The other side of ufology. It's okay. It's okay. It's all right. I'm going to show you a mothership of orbs. Let's see if this. Do you have any more of those reviews for Rush Order Tees? Oh, yeah. Tons of them. In his five star review, Chris S says the. Watch. Oh, yeah. We saw this. Yeah. Sorry to say that's not a mothership, but Rich, why isn't the big white mothership getting smaller? Oh, it, it does. But you're seeing the inside of that big, big 10-foot balloon mass group of balloons. There's hundreds of balloons that are going to come out before you start seeing it get smaller. All right, let's get rid of that. Oh, yeah, I wanted a... God, I'm all over now. See, I took a second hit off that stuff and I can't think. The group documents most of their encounters, including one they called the Mothership Fleet. The video shows an amorphous blob 
in the sky over Long Beach, California figures. The object doesn't look like a structured UFO type craft because it's balloons, though the smaller objects it emitted assumed a triangular shape. Oh, they don't understand why. In his professional career, Jim Martin has overseen distribution of dozens of films of paranormal content, but for him, summoning isn't a spooky work of fiction. It's real. Anybody can do it, Martin told Mystery Wire. You don't need a guru or a teacher. You don't need to have any background in religion or philosophy. You just need to have an open heart. Look to the sky with gratitude. Oh, that's it. That's it. All right, hold on. Open heart. All right, I'm smiling because it's open. Gratitude. Uh, I can't do that live. Come on, Jim. Then he says, and I think the most important thing is to just have a sincere intention to make contact. And it does work. So now that Mystery Wire, who is friends with Lou Elizondo, George Knapp, right? Who's friends with Mellon, who's friends with Nick Pope, all those people are now approving CE5 techniques from Greer. I guess Greer's not so crazy after all. But he is! They are! All of them! Don't you get it? Come on! I know, I talk about psychic stuff, you know, and I try to believe in it, and, you know, maybe I feel like I have the power, but I don't. I'm just a really good guesser. I promise you, it's all it is. It's bullshit. No, I can't, I can't. I can't. I can't. Ah, summonsing, according to Martin, is a mental process by which a person focuses on a place in the sky and mentally invites close encounters of the fifth kind. He says he goes outside, does a simple meditation for a few minutes to clear his mind and then focuses on a, a feeling of gratitude. I don't even know how to do that. He then said he will transmit the thought to please come or to show him the truth to make contact. Martin says after doing this, he waits a few minutes and the phenomena will usually manifest in the sky. Wow. Jim Martin, of all people, is now summonsing UFOs on the regular, and yet they eerily look like balloons. Come on, Jim. Come on over. We need to talk. Can't go on like this, Jim. You just can't. I got to pull the plug on you, Jim. You are falling and have fell into the lure of the loo. The lure of the loo. It sounds like the war of the world. <gasps> False flag alien invasion. All right. What else? Uh, this is just amazing to me that people with such high intellect don't understand what they're recording. It just boggles the mind. There's Because in their mind, they're saying this. This is what they're saying. There's no way balloons can do that. That's what they say. No way balloons can form a triangle like that. There is a way. And they do it all the time. Especially when you have three of them. Yeah, it's weird. If there were four balloons there, it would have been a square. I can't believe I'm seeing squares. You know? If there were six, it would have been that. It would have been eight. It would have been Octomom. Right? I couldn't believe there's nothing on this planet. No balloon could do a hexagon. Yeah, they can. They have. And they do. And they, they did. Did I ever say that? But it blows my mind. That they don't even, they don't even fathom the thought 
to even do a test about it. I'm going to show you my balloons. You want to see my balloons again? I'll show you my balloons. These are good balloons. This is balloons. You don't see any strings. You don't see any bullshtomery. You actually see what maybe intelligence. Come on, you remember. It's one of the best UFO sightings in history. It is. Right? Yep, it's blurry. You sure you gosh dang right it's blurry. That's oh yeah, that was the end of it? No. I'm not stopping it it's on the video. I got to go back. For those of you who weren't here when I played this or have ever seen it, I was at an intersection and I had the sunroof open. It was April. It was nice out. And I saw a flash. And I looked up and I saw another flash and these dots appearing out of thin air, but they were also in a vortex. They were they were turning and I thought maybe it was like a dust devil throwing up paper. And then I recorded what happens to be one of the coolest fleet videos once you get clear here. And it's not bad. It's a pretty good sighting, especially the ending where the UFO is heading right for the other one and it moves out of the way right at the last second. And paper doesn't hover like that. If it was paper in the wind, in the uh, in wind, it would be flipping and flopping Watch all over the place. I'm watching. And then we'll go backwards. That's Howard that Stern in the background no, with Stone Cold Robert. Steve Austin. I'm actually looking out the sunroof of my car. I'll tell you the whole shebang in a minute. This end here gets so unbelievable. You won't believe it. I must have faked it. No way it could be real. You're going to love this part. You're going to see one of these UFOs hovering and two of them pass by. One is about to hit it, the second one, and it gets out of its way. It goes around it. Wait, here, it's coming. What am I looking for in my phone? I need to get you guys something. There it is, watch. Watch the second one. It's coming right for it, ready? No, I'm not. Boink. <laughs> what do you want to talk to me about now? looking for in my phone I need to get you guys something there it is watch watch the second one it's coming right for it ready no I'm not boink <laughs> what do you want to talk to me about now that's who I am I'm joking that's a good sighting right there so when I put that on the internet I think it when I put it on YouTube back then, it did very well. So you can see a little difference in uh, one video compared to the ones we saw. The ones we saw where they're, they're dropping out and it looks like, you know, the UFOs laying eggs. Um, because I know it's balloons, it doesn't excite me. But I know it looks cool. But... The fact that I know mine aren't balloons or paper. And if they were balloons, how did those two stay in a perfectly straight line, you know, heading towards the other one that was just sitting there? You know, and then the other one comes like, you're going to hit me. You're going to hit me. Oh, he just missed me. That's a great video. I love me for that. I really do. Hey, Boston Deadhead. Thank you, Chief. Thank you very much. That's uh, it's, and that's not even the best one I got. That's a good one. I have I am going to tonight after I work out. 
I'm going to pull out the tapes and uh, like I promised, I promised I'm going to start throwing down uh, some good videos from in the, back in the day. Yeah, I'm excited about that. Thank you, Boston Deadhead, for the $2 support. That's a big mucho gusto generoso and a continuing supporter of Goofon. Uh, nope. Nope. All right. Let's go to. Thanks, Boston Deadhead. Continuing supporter. And did I say it? Mucho gusto, generoso. Yes, I did. All right. Let's, let's pull that. Oh, I know what I meant. I have to show you. And then we'll continue on with the where we were with the show. All right. Let me pull this up. I have got, uh, I think, a new video of mine I can show you right now if I can find it. I think it's right here on the old website. All right, hold on. No. All right, this might be it. White jelly. No. Yeah, that's a good one. Okay. I may have found something I've been looking for for a while. <gasps> Please be here. This, this, if it's here, it's my Sedona UFO. I found it. Oh my God. I, I am thrilled. All right. I've, I've always said I have one of the best UFO pictures in history. You want to see it? Ooh, I got to screen save it so I can blow it up. I can't believe I just found it by accident. Hey, I don't want that. What's going on? Something happened. Uh, something's wrong. I can't do anything. Oh, that was weird. All right, let me pull this up. I'm going to show you one of the best UFO pictures in history. I took it. It was in Sedona, 2005, with my Fujitsu camera. I still have the uh, the card, the digital card, somewhere. <laughs> I'll find it, though. All right. Uh, I need to pull it up and so I can blow it up for you. So let me do that. Here it is. Oh, wait. It didn't. It didn't. Hey, man. It didn't screen save it. It wouldn't. Okay, that should have worked. Let's see if it worked. Yeah, there, now it worked. All right, here we go. I'll show you what I'm doing. Doing a little work right now. I'm going to blow up the picture so you can see the UFO. This is amazing. You guys are going to shit if you haven't seen it. Uh, okay, let me edit. Pull this over here. I'm going to leave it like that. Now, can you see it? It's right here. It's like a bell-shaped UFO. Now it's going to get closer. And you're going to, I'm just going to do that. There it is. That is the best. It has, it has, this is a little bit grainy. I can get a clear version for future, but there's a, this looks like old patina metal. But what I noticed is there, there's a, these are like windows or dividers. And this bottom part looks like it extends out. So the bottom part of this craft, either that or it turned over. And it, it looks like these are slots. Like, so something can glide and it gets bigger or smaller. You can't see it in this graininess. But this, I will get a good version of the picture. I don't know why it's so grainy. I think it's this version. Um, but I have the original, and I tell you, shit, is it cool? Yeah, it really is. 
Let's go back. I want to see if you can see how you see that. It looks a little better there. But that's a real craft. What I was doing, I was looking over. Um, there was we had there was a coffee place that it's on the main strip in Sedona, and you can sit outside. And right outside is the patio, but underneath there's a hundred foot drop where homes are and trees coming up right up to you. You know, so I leaned over the ledge. And I saw the mountains across the way, and I was just taking a picture like this. I took one there, one there, and one there, like a panoramic. Now, in this picture, there's three other UFOs. And they're in the background. I don't think you'll be able to see them here, but I'll try and show you. And they're exactly equidistant. Like, if it was seven inches from this one to this one, it was seven inches from that one to that one. And seven inches across. It was a perfect triangle they made. Yeah, it's pretty wild. So let me see if I can show you that. Oh, recent changes. Let's cancel that. Save this for future use. But that is probably one of the best UFO pictures ever. When it's clear. See here? Oh, let me blow it up. Let's see if we can see the other three UFOs. They're over, oh, I can see them. All right, it's going to be impossible for you. Um, no, I don't know what that is. What is that? Oh, that's on my screen. So there's one right here, right above the fingertips, right? And then the other one's here. And then the other one is over here. So it's like seven inches from here to here, seven inches from there to there. I thought it was seven from here to here, but it's not. I think it was 14 if I remember correctly, or something weird like that. 21, maybe. But they're there. It's just hard to see. I'm going to try to blow it up. Let's see. Oh, that's weird. Oh, you can see them a little bit. Get out of there. God. Right there. Right there. Ah, this stupid thing. Yeah, you can see them there there and there three ufos i'll blow it up a little more see if you can see it a little better there they are one two three see them isn't that weird yeah so these were hanging out in the background and i got the one of the other ones close up it's a pretty amazing day there it is right there I didn't know it was there when I took it, of course. I don't know if it was passing by or hovering there, but it's really a bell-shaped UFO that I think turns into a disc. I think that part goes inside and it's compact. It really is. You see nothing? How do you see nothing? How do you, how do you see nothing? It's amazing, Sheila. I'm pointing it out. Unbelievable. No? All right. It's there. Maybe you need glasses. Maybe the stream isn't coming out clear yet. Yeah, it could be that. That That's true. I said they were going to be hard to see, and I was surprised I was able to see them. But on, um, on a, a regular monitor without all this bullshit and the live stream going, it's pretty clear. Very proud of that picture. Here's a, somebody compared a UFO that they saw to mine, and they did a uh, comparison. Let me see if that's still here. Nah, it's not available on the old Wayback Machine. I'm glad I was able to pull that out. That was unexpected pleasure. That really is a great UFO sighting. Can't believe that was September 9th, 2005. September 9th. Humanoids and eh. fleet, 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 December 12th. 
Was this balloon race? Balloon race? UFO Fleet 300, full description of January 30th UFO Fleet. That was a good one, too, I captured. Let's see if we can pull that one up. You guys never seen this one. Nope, it won't let me. Damn it. Yeah, you've never seen this one. And it won't let me pull it up. All right. Who's this guy? F-A-P-U-R-D-A-Y. For the UK, for a $5 super dono, a dono means there's no emoji, no sticker, and uh, no comment. It's just love. Thank you, FAP. A huge supporter of the goof on. Mucho gusto. Generoso. Because why? What are we? Oh! Truthology for ufology. Thanks, FAP. That's a big mucho gusto generoso support, sir. Grazie, grazie. Damn dots. And an old security camera on, on that pic of yours, Richie. Huh? All right, let's get back to uh, the main... Okay, let's talk about this here real quick. Oh, I have another video. Not mine. Thank God. All right, I'm going to show you this. This is from Elf. I don't know who Elf is, but the video is all that I care about. Let's take a look. It's got almost 3,700 views. I don't like it. No sound. That's fishy already. That looks like Billy Meyer stuff. Like this, the way it's acting. I'm going to say right now that these are not UFOs of the type we think. That looks so fake. Are you serious? This is the worst. All right. Are we done? This is a joke, right? This has to be a joke. Oh, well, what happened? Why did it do that? That's weird. Allegedly filmed by early contactee, oh, Howard Menger in Fit Blue Mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, not buying. That guy's a hoaxer. No one. I should have read it first like a schmuck. I didn't. All right. Now I want to talk about this movie. Can you believe Bob Keviat? I don't care how you say his name. This guy's put a, a, together some several. God, I can't speak. Some several. He's put together several great shows on UFOs and everything we like. He's, he's really a good guy. He makes pretty good product. Till now. Yeah. Let me show you. No, hold on. I'm going to change the uh, my background for this subject. I wish we could do this quicker. Yeah, hold on. There we go. There you go. Nice. So, he put together a movie about the Mandela effect. He's treating it like it's a real thing. I'm scared for my freaking UFO life. I know a lot of you believe in the Mandela effect. But let me assure you, and I don't like to be this guy. I just have to save you. It's not real, okay? It's not real. I, here's an example. People, oh, I always thought he had a monocle on his eye. I could have sworn he did. But he didn't, okay? I never remembered him with the monocle on his eye. My dad still has our Monopoly board from 1972. It doesn't have the monocle. Or does it? My dad's doesn't. But, but somebody somewhere made a mistake in an ad 
when they drew the monopoly like hey we're selling this over at kmart for 10 bucks maybe they made a poster with the monocle on it and then it took off and other people thought they saw it and started you know it's a mistake in public advertising well isn't all advertising public i guess so redundant what the hell's going on here paul stoke again that's a ten dollar super dono paul hitting the show twice tonight we're surviving because of you you know thank you and everybody else come on i gotta come up with something new all the time let's give it up thank you paul for the ten dollar super dono and good i know i know let's continue the show all over the show that's what we do fap throwing down a monster super chat of a million dollars dude uh, dude come on it's unbelievable you just gave me goosebumps you are the continuing uh you are the continuing support you are a continuing supporter of goofon that's huge Let's give it up well, yes, thank you, FAP, for their $100 Super Dono. That good. All over. Everywhere. Thank you very much, man. That is like Joe Normus. No, G ginormous. It's ginormous. That's because of Bob Kiviat, because of where I'm going with the Mandela. Is that why? My God. Hey, I just got cold. Thank you for that. Um, FAP throwing down a, a 10 dimes at one time. Everybody tonight. Thank you. Seriously. What's that? Hold on. Somebody told me check my messages. You know, Nathan, I can answer that loudly because nobody knows the context of the conversation. But that's how it used to be. Me and Nathan were just talking. Thank you very much, FAP, everybody. I appreciate the uh, support. It's huge. You have no idea. Seriously. We were talking about it before the show. Thank you. Man, alive, you guys. Throwing down. Appreciate it. No, you have no idea. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bob Kiviat. Let's play that. Let's play that. Let's play it. Because the, the Mandela effect, I can't speak. It's not real. It's bad memories, bad advertising, people thinking they saw Luke, I am your father. No, it's no, I am your father. Stop saying Luke. It never happened. You know, things like that. All right, here we go. Bob Kiviat films on Twitter. Take a look. My latest project is The Mandela Effect, Fact or Fiction. It is a documentary very similar to what I would have done on the Fox Network with UFOs or Bigfoot or ghosts or miracles caught on tape. Or you, you know why I don't like this documentary? Because it's a waste of time. That's why, Bob. Nothing against you or this film that you, that hasn't even come out yet. But it is. It's a waste of time. Now, I'm going to watch it, and I would have watched it even if I didn't have this show because I think it's interesting seeing how people believe in this stuff. And I like to see how my mind played tricks on me throughout the years. You know? So. Or prophecies, are they true? Can cross-connect? Biblical prophecies with Edgar Casey, the Hopi Indians, the Mayans. Mm -hmm. I did that around 2000, so there was a tie in there. And I'm about truth. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. Thanks for joining me today on the Moneybag 73 channel. Today we have a special treat. 
a situation here that's extremely mind-blowing, and I don't think a lot of you are even going to believe it, but it's happening. And today I'm here with Robert Kiviat. Uh, thanks for joining us today, Robert. My pleasure, Evan. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm uh, exciting to do this for quite a while now. One look at the JC Penny logo, and I was like affected. No doubt, JC Penny never had the EY. It's ridiculous. I have stories I can tell, which hopefully get into that are some of the biggest memories as a young teenager I've ever could imagine. And they all revolved around going to this one bus stop in New York on Long Island called Roosevelt Field. And there was JC Penny right next to the bus stop. And you'd stare and you'd wait. You'd wait literally for like, you know, I don't know, sometimes an hour for a bus to come. And, you know, if you missed your bus. So, excuse me. So basically my view of it was that one, when I saw that, I had to dig in. And from there, I've been massively affected for a very long time. You know, um, the Mandela effect was good for me for one day. That's it. And then after that, I was like, it's all bullshit. It's all bullshit. It really is. It's it's uh, subliminal messages that get lost in your memory. Your brain doesn't have, your brain isn't designed to remember everything you see. And a lot of those things are unnecessary to keep in your brain. Like, like you really need to remember the Ford logo had a little curly tail at the end. I didn't know. It had a curl at the end, but it did, and it always has. But for some reason, I never noticed it. Looney Tunes, right? People think what? Uh, Tunes was spelled T-U-N-E-S. It's always been T-O-O-N-S because it matched Looney. No, nope. no, nope. it's Tunes, T-U-N-E. I've always remembered Tunes. Yeah, because that's how it's really spelt. You know, it's all that stuff. And I did a little research on it, to be honest. And when I noticed I was seeing old ads that were spelling things wrong, that's when I knew they weren't spelling things properly or they were misquoting movies. And... Yeah, I know. Even uh, the voice of Darth Vader got it wrong when he was on a TV show, some talk show. And he even said, Luke, I am your father. Because that, for some reason, was the way everybody remembered it. And it's wrong. No, search your feelings, Luke. No, it can't be. No, I am your father. And the worst scream in, in cinema history, the worst acting. No, remember how bad that was? Oh, such bad acting. I actually laughed in the theater when I first saw it. It was so bad. I think I still laugh at it. So Bob Kiviat put all his time and energy into something that isn't even real, but because a lot of people believe in the Mandela effect, they'll probably have you know, some moderate success with that movie. Moonlick thrown down, two, 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 goof on cola tithing, tithing. Once welfare check cleared, goof on cola tithing. Why? T well, I don't understand the cola. What? I could understand if it just said goof on tithing once welfare check is cleared. That is a very interesting super chat. <laughs> I don't know what it means. $2.22 though. Thank you very much for the, uh, the, you know, let's give you an old school one. All right. How about that one? There we go. Agush. Oh. Oh. Remember those? 
Thanks a lot, Moonwick. Good friend of the show, continuing supporter as well. All right, what do we got next on Bob here? Bob Kiviet. Uh, let's see. Oh. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God, I forgot about this. Okay. I'm going to play a UFO video that's got 37 views. And uh, let's just see what you guys think of it. Do you know I haven't even watched it? I just saw that it was a UFO video on Twitter, took it, and got it ready. Didn't watch it yet. Let's watch it together. I said let's... Oh, it's thinking. Yeah, this isn't going to go in the way I want to do it. Do one of these. Uh-oh. Computer's thinking. There we go. No sound. Flares, balloons, airplanes. I don't know what that red light just came on right there. All right, it's way out of focus, first of all. This is horrible. Horrible. Never send me a video like this, ever. There's no reference points. Uh, this could be anything. This could be lights on a, you know, I, I don't know. I don't even know anything about it. This is awful. It's probably cars in the distance. I don't know. That's what it looks like, doesn't it? And the top part's just reflection. That's cars. I'm not buying it. I can't even watch it anymore. It's hurting. It hurts. Yeah, a little bit. What did I just see? Hey, did you hear Celine Dion died? Yeah, it was weird. Or light bulbs hanging. Tony, yep. Yeah. I don't know, but uh, I like the cars. I like the cars. All right, I just got a message. Let's see. Whoa, they're coming in. Messages, that's it. Yep. All right, here we go. This is from Rodrigo. Oh, I can't play that on the show. Maybe I can. Let me try this. It's Norio, Norio Hayakawa, his version of the X-Files theme. Somebody just sent this, Rodrigo Vieira. I haven't listened to it. Let's take a listen, see if it's worth it. There we go. In three, two, let's just leave it there. Put the link to that in the show description. It's all right. I can't play it all. It's copyrighted, I think. All right. <clears throat> I said all I can say about the Mandela effect. She was dead already? What? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, she did. I actually have the, a video up here I was watching. If you want to, you know, let's take a look and give Celine Dion the respect she deserved. On your show. It's a UFO show. We don't do that here. No, let's do it. I'm joking. That's not nice at all. Uh, you know, she died. If she was a comic, I would put it up, but no disrespect. Don't disrespect me looking like. All right, here we go. Avi Loeb. Avi Loeb's new take. Check this out. You're going to love it. It's his new take on of the data must be wrong because nothing I know of can do that. It's so obviously bad 
that it defies belief, and he admits that he was visited at home by this new UFO office. It makes me wonder just what the F is really going on here, to be honest. Did I already read this? It sounds super familiar. Oh, yes, I already did this. Monday night, I was visited by the people at the going to do the new Arrow office in D.C., and he asked me to write a short scientific paper on UAP. So yesterday morning at 4.30 before my routine morning, I had a look at the Ukrainian paper, and within a half hour, figured they got distance to their dark objects wrong. They got the distance to their dark objects wrong by a factor of 10, or else there would be a huge fireball around each of them as a result of their friction with the air. After correcting that, everything falls into place with the parameters of artillery shells. As Feynman noted, there is a great pleasure in figuring things out. There is no way out of this argument because they claim the objects are dark, meaning that they block light. No, that's not what that means. That's not what that means. The objects are dark. That, that means they're blocking light. No, they're dark. If he said they're light, they would have been a whitish gray, a light gray or something. And then he says this cross, the cross section with photos implies that the objects must interact with air molecules. Oh, brother-in-law, you know, Avi just, uh, he doesn't get it. He doesn't get it. He says, I've never seen an object because you've never seen a UFO before, maybe. I, I don't know. Just because you haven't seen something done before doesn't mean it hasn't been done before or cannot be done. I love this guy, Avi Loeb, but I also, the most fr frustrates me. <laughs> he frustrates me to no end. What's this? Oh, somebody said go to the 15-minute mark of the Bob Kiviot. Let me see why. All right. Let me just play one last uh, hurrah from Kiviot. Why he would waste his time on this movie is beyond me. It's for the kids, though. For the kids. Short, really, as we'll talk about today. And say, Sally, come on. I mean, let's talk about what you said. If you said now, right now, what do you mean? Because everybody remembers you saying, you like me, you really, really like me, like I'm being accepted. You're accepting me into the film and motion picture academy and respect. Right. And all My opinion... That. My opinion is that she remembers because there's a David, I want to see David Leverman show in the 90s. And then David said something about, oh, well, they like you. And then Sally's response to that was, yeah, they like me. They really like me, don't they? Or something like that. Like she, ah, she didn't say anything that. about right now, now or nothing. No, there was no now. She just said, yeah, they like me. They really like me, don't they? Like, you know, talking about that about famous it. quote. I don't understand why I was directed there. Yeah, I'm not gonna say it was a waste of time, but it wasn't about the Mandela effect, really. It had a few theories woven in, like the quantum computer and whatever, but that's not the documentary movie that should be made. That's coming, and we're gonna talk about that. That's right, we need something that explores this incredible phenomenon and looks at all the different facets of it and all the different things that it touched. I'm, I'm actually embarrassed for Bob and, and that guy, whoever he is. I am, I can't be any more embarrassed for um, humanity. I mean that with all sincerity. It's not real. I just can't believe somebody made a documentary about the Mandela effect, whether it could be real or not. It's not real. I know you guys think it is. Some of you out there, I know. <clears throat> I know. 
It's not. Sorry. Everywhere I've looked into the Mandela effect told me that it was a misquote or somebody was wrong. That's it. And nobody can prove. Here's the art. You want to know why the Mandela effect is stupid? You want to know why? <clears throat> Let's say I, I show you this chicken today. And tomorrow I bring it in. And it's got an orange thing instead of a red one around there, right? It's got orange highlights. But nobody would know the difference. Nobody would know. Because when things change, if the Mandela effect is real, we wouldn't notice it because the, everything changed. No, no, that's not how it works. Only some people No. No. If somebody came back in time and changed history, we wouldn't even know the difference because everything changes and we have a new reality. Depending on whatever happens, that's the reality we're in. And we won't know if anything changes. So usually the Mandela effect is about cereal. It's about um, ad advertising. It's about little logos. You know, you, not one person has ever said, I was driving a Yugo. And I came out and I had a Porsche. I remembered having a Yugo. But here are the keys in my hands with my initials on them. And I'm driving a Porsche. I don't know, but I felt like I've driven this car before. That doesn't happen. Nobody walks out of their house and say, oh, the deli changed. Not a deli anymore. It's a movie theater. That doesn't happen. Never happens with the big ticket items, does it? Because it isn't real. It's only the things that your brain can remember. That That's all you need to remember. Subliminal messages are subliminal. Subliminal. They're that way on purpose. Uh, it's for your subconscious to catch it while your eyes are focusing on life going on around you. God. That's why the Mandela effect is fake. It's not a real thing. You should walk into Tropicana Stadium one day, the Mandela effect happens, and now it's Chase Field. Shit like that should happen. But it doesn't. Well, that's a really big Mandela effect, Rich. That's just way too big. The universe can't handle it because of ripple effect. Blow, blow me, all right? You know, watch this. All right. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's watch. Let's take a look and see where the lights are at. See this yellow? This this right here? Well, let me get closer for you. Okay, let's just remember it's right underneath this one. Right? It's pretty close to this. But I don't know. They look like flares and they're they're dimming off in the sequence that they were probably dropped. I don't know why they dropped them. It may look like it was over Manhattan, but it could have been over the Atlantic several, several miles away. Um, it looks like they were drifting from right to left. And to me, that's just flares for whatever reason they were dropping them. Could have been a training exercise for a rescue. You know, the Port Authority down there, they, they do have to train somewhere, but I don't know if that would be something like that happening over the Atlantic off the coast of uh, New York. But not buying it. I think it's flares. It's, it's nice, but they're, they're probably 30 miles out. Hey, FAP, get a you <laughs> No shit. I always wanted one just to have a beater car. Yeah, man, those things were terrible. They were the worst car ever. I am going to go. I'll see if I... Well, now cars are like five times overpriced, even a used Yugo. Maybe I can get a new Yugo. That's funny. Thank you, FAP. Huge supporter tonight. Appreciate it. That's a big mucho gusto generoso. Hey, I did get a PayPal. Came in from... Huh? I don't know what that means. 
But thank you, David Wilcox, for the $14. I'll just round it up. Thank you very much on the PayPal. That's right, the PayPal, the Cash App. Those are uh, other ways you could help support the goof. And uh, I believe that's it. Uh-oh. Oh, wow. Oh, what? Get out of here. That's odd. Sorry. Thank you, FAP. Mucho gusto, generoso. <laughs> okay, let's move. Uh, hey, welcome to the show, everybody. Glad you're still hanging out. Uh, where are we? A few minutes left? That right there, not, not very good. All right, I've been meaning to play this for a while. I don't know. Wait. Never mind. Never mind. I am finally going to get. Oh, no, 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 no. I wanted to listen to Ryan Graves here for a second. That's right. Let's take a listen to Ryan Graves. He's the pilot who told everybody we saw. People in my, uh, what, what was it? In, well, people, his friends who were pilots at the time when he worked in the Navy said they saw UFOs almost every day for two years. But I want to hear what he's saying now. This is recent. This is uh, February, February, February 16th. He's not going to say anything new. What a stupid, I, I'm so stupid. Any of that changed? Um, I I have to wait. What changed? I gotta hear. Very very difficult to get across interstellar distances, and you know, I'm not seeing any extraordinary evidence to change my mind that these things aren't terrestrial in origin. Do you think about UFOs, and did you have a view, and and has any of that changed? Um, I I have to assume that every little kid looks up and wonders if there's someone else out there. I was no different, certainly. Um, life has a funny way of making you pay attention sometimes. Yeah. And it's certainly got your attention now. It does. So, um, do you... Oh, my God. What's wrong with this? Why is this interview weird? Is Does he seem like he's under control? Like somebody's controlling him? Is he acting awfully strange? Take a look at his... It's weird the way he's talking. Oh yeah. It's like he it's like the he knows something's about to happen like somebody's about to sit on a whoopee cushion and he put it there and he's waiting for them to sit on it. That's how he's acting. I have to assume that every little kid looks up and wonders yeah, that weird awful smile. If there's someone else out there, weird. I was weird. No different certainly. Um, he's hypnotized. Life has a funny way of making you pay attention sometimes. <laughs> And Did you see that? Watch. Life has a funny way of making you pay attention sometimes. It was almost like 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 a robot. <laughs> well, and it's certainly got your attention now. It does. So um, do you feel stigmatized at all advancing any of your thoughts? Uh, publicly, you know, from my perspective, this is a very pragmatic thing for me. You know, people I know are flying big, expensive aircraft, and they're almost hitting things. So, you know, skepticism is the least of my concern. Now I know why he's acting weird. He has an earpiece in. Somebody's probably talking to him. Don't answer that. It's Lou. Lou's back there going, "Don't answer that." You know what? Yeah, I'll put the link to that in the description, as I always do with everything. And there's something, one other, nah, not tonight. I was going to go over some of, uh, let's do that, some of Scott Brown's debunks that he put together. You guys want to, do you want to, is this the right place for, I don't, I was going to do this last night. But it's a game, and it's for adults. 
and I, and I want to play a game, but it's it's sexual, and that's not that's not what goof on is about. So, but it's it would be fun. That's the thing. We can't have fun anymore. Scott Brown came up with some really good debunks over the years, and um, and he put them together all out. Um, all out on Twitter. And I believe it's what? Into, in the field, I believe. Yeah, in the field. And we were going over some of those yesterday and they were really cool. And I said, let's continue with them tomorrow because there's just too many to go through. We can do this all week. And uh, let's, let's do it for a couple of minutes. And then, uh, you know, we don't have to stop right at top of the hour, you know. We can go a little longer. It's okay. Nobody's going to get in trouble. Mommy and Daddy already approved it. Another hoaxer caught this. Uh, sorry. Another hoaxer caught in the act. This was created with the UFO phone app. Huh. All right. Well, where are they? Back here? Birds are commonly mistaken for UFOs. Yeah, big time. That's interesting. Let me bring this up a little bit. Yeah, this is a bird, not a UFO. You can tell on most of these. This is a real cool one right here. I like this one. But it's a bird. It's amazing. Shutter speed. Look at that. One five hundredths, one fifth, one fifteenth. Can change the shape of moving objects. Perfect, blurry, in the middle. This is a good one. Insects are commonly mistaken for paranormal activity like rods or flying serpents or pixies or fairies or jackrabbits or bunny rabbits, or bears, or lions. But uh, the shutter speed matters. If you have a fast shutter speed, all of this will go away, and you will see just one tiny little object. It's a beautiful thing, shutter speed. And blimps are commonly mistaken for UFOs. Very, very much. There's a lot of famous blimps out there that got mistaken for UFOs. Yep. Very good one there, right there, Scott. I like that one. I like that a lot. I like them all so far tonight. Let's see what else we got. One more section of four we could look at. What? What's that? Oh, that's a great idea. That's pretty much the same thing we just talked about. All right. Yeah, we'll, we'll continue with that tomorrow. Everybody okay? What are you guys going to do the rest of the weekend? Tomorrow's football. Right? It's football Sunday. There will be a show at 7 o'clock. Maybe I'll go at 5. It depends. I don't know if I'm having meatballs at Ma's. But I think I'm going to go earlier tomorrow. I may not go tomorrow at all. That's right. There's baseball playoffs, the wild card, and football all day. We'll see. Anything new coming out, you know, we'll talk about it. I am going to be uh, making a video. I'm going to be putting up my uh, a new sighting, maybe one, two, or three, but I may put them all out in one video. I am also going to make videos where I may trick you and just leave it out there and tell you to tell me what this is. You know, we'll do that for Goof on Lives and stuff. Goof on, why did I say that? I meant to say Goof on You, Goof on University. 
Um, I've got some good drone footage I'm going to put together for you. So a lot of good stuff's coming out. And uh, third phase UFO report may get back. Uh, there's a little issue with it right now. <clears throat> I don't know why. I think because we haven't been uploading. Um, something happened to the channel. That's right. I forgot. Third phase of moon will tell me about it later. Uh, I want to thank the moderators and super chatters. Mod on Amia. Forget about it. All the love and support you guys gave me tonight. I love you so much. It's like, uh, you know, when you meet a nice girl, you whine her and dine her. And then, you know, when you're done with the nuggets, you just give her a big kiss right after you smoked your cigarette. Nothing like kissing an ashtray. Remember those days when it didn't matter? I'll kiss an ashtray as long as there's lips on it <laughs> and a tongue. Uh, thank you, guys. Thank you, newcomers and veterans, for uh, hanging out, giving the show a chance. Don't forget to like, share, subscribe. I don't believe what that person told me, so you know what to do. And you can still support the show. All the links to do that are in the show description. And what else? We are, what are we? Oh! With truthology for ufology. <laughs> so enjoy the rest of your weekend. I will see you soon. Be nice to each other. And alien Identify flying objects.